Let's get to it. Get straight to it. Okay, expectations for this session. You do not expect me to give you tips. Do not expect me to tell you what's coming out for your exams. Do not expect me to give you the answers for the papers before the books are released. Okay, that's not the expectation. That's not what you should be expecting from this session. So what we're going to uh, be covering in this session is we will be covering um, how to make sure that what you write in your physics papers right will help you get the most marks okay so let's get started okay so um okay so as a reminder right okay so we're not we're not going to cover topics so in terms of um how to make sure that you write your answers properly right okay so let's talk about calculations in general In general, first, huh? Okay, so when we when you present your calculations in 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 physics, right? Do you need to show working? Ah, huh? what do you think? So please do not forget, because there's been many times when I mark the exam papers, a lot of students just write final answer, no working. I can't give marks. It marks if they don't have so don't forget show working ah. Huh? you need to show every step of the way no um this is not maths this is physics but um so if you're wondering do i need to show oh why then i i shift y equals ax plus squared plus bx plus c then i rearrange ah don't bother okay so if you are the very the smart one and you're, oh, okay, you just write down the equation so we can get answer. You don't need to show me the step-by-step -step implementation. Okay, then fine. Your, the marks are always given for showing the first substitution. That means, oh my god, the right, right, my writing is so bad. Let's do that again. So which means that when you show your working, uh, please, 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 all right, show show the substitution of the correct formula that you're using. If you are using, for example, lambda equals kx over d, please show clearly, okay, let's say like lambda equals to like 3 times 5 divided by 20. Show clearly the substitution. Don't just write, oh, lambda equals 10 meters. Whatever, or whatever the correct number is, I don't know. But but please show the, the, the first substitution, okay? So you have to show... Hey, yeah, uh, so fail. This is Jamboard, not Microsoft Word. You must show correctly the first... First line of substitution. Uh, first line of substitution in the formula, and then you must also write the correct. Obviously, you must write correct You write wrong, wrong lah. Okay, and you must write the answer with unit. Okay, if your final answer doesn't have unit in SPM, they won't give you uh, marks or so. If you give me the final answer but no unit, cannot. Okay, answer with unit. Now, quick uh, reminder, when you are writing your answers, right, can you leave your answers in fractions? But during calculation, can or not? Yes, during working, when you are showing working, Working can be in fractions. Answers cannot. In fact, right, when you are doing your working, right, maybe I should add another line here. Okay, for working, uh, uh, no, let, me, let me put it over here. Lah. Okay, so working can be in fractions. It's just that your final, final answer must be in decimals, all right? And please also take note, when you are, do, when you are doing the working, right, don't round up. The working. If you can leave them in fractions or write a long decimal place, you do. Why? Because if you have to take a number and you have to substitute it into another number later, when you round up, you know how when we deal with large numbers, the numbers all like a bit different like that. There's a certain range which is accepted for SPM. If your number falls out of the range, even if you calculate it correctly, you might not get full marks because the number is too much out of range already. 
So even if you argue with the teacher, I got it correct. Yes, but you shouldn't have rounded up in the first place during the working. The only place you can actually do a, a nice roundup is when it comes to your final answer. All right, only for your final answer. Um, for, uh, yeah, you've done. You've I uh, got no example for you. But like, let's say for example, uh, if you calculated uh, something like this, like let's say uh, we had to count um, v equals f lambda lah. Okay, uh, v equals f lambda. Let's say v happens to be something like okay, we got v is uh two thousand five hundred and f is let's say something like uh. Wait, I want to come up with a weird number. Mm. Uh, let's say it, let's say it's like three thousand lambda. Then you count down down, you got what zero point eight three. Okay, then you you round up zero point eight three meters. Then later, let's say you have to calculate something, right? Uh, let's say like uh, lambda equals to a x over d. So you got 0 0.83 equals to let's say like 10 10x over uh, 20 ke, then you got x equals to then then you you've got oh, one one 1.67 meters so so something like like this lah. let's say right okay because we have to take this number and you have to substitute into here so if let's say you round up, okay, by right you should have, let's say you go and round up 0 0.8. Ah, my last to write, you go and write 0 0.8. Okay, and after that, uh, you go and put uh, 0 0.8 and then you got oh, 0.6. When it's like this, uh, when the number is too rounded up, uh, wrong really. Because too rounded up cannot. So you try to write. If you if you need to write uh, as many decimal places as possible, you write zero point eight three 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 three. That way, uh, your numbers will be far more far more accurate, uh. This is not a really a great example, but I think some of you have come across numbers where you round up halfway. That's that, uh, You round up really halfway, then when you get the final answer, eh, the number looks so different from the answer scheme, and that's the reason you rounded up too much. Okay, so this is especially when we're dealing with very large numbers, like in chapter three gravitation, or like in chapter seven, uh, quantum. Okay, so be careful about that. Try not to round up. Oh, you can let's say for example you leave the fact the, the calculation here, uh, lambda equals two five hundred over three thousand. Let's say oh, oh the answer is not asking for lambda, it's asking for x. Then you take this fraction and put it inside here, twenty five hundred over three thousand equals ten over twenty x or something like that. Then you get the final answer. The final answer part ah uh, you can write it in fact in, in fraction like in decimals. Okay. Right, uh, so I just want to emphasize this because I see every year always students round up halfway and then after the final answer, they can't get correct because they round up too much. Okay, another question that was asked um, early in an earlier session, very good question. When, when do we write in standard form? Above four significant figures. Does everyone concur? That's my mouth. Okay. Standard form is not necessary, but encouraged. Because if we're talking about very large numbers or very small numbers, you're just trolling the examiner if you're writing numbers like uh, 8, 3, 5, 6, 7.29. Ay, my God. <laughs> you might as well just write in standard form. Okay? Better. So, standard form. Is encouraged. Form is encouraged. Okay, above four significant figures. You write even if it's less than four significant figures. You write standard form is also fine. Let's say you want to write one point two times ten power of two. Look, can it's not wrong. All right, can also right. But uh, if you leave it, let's say it's hundred and twenty meters, also looks good. Ma, easy to read. So it's more. <laughs> so you just look. Your, use your your logic. Look at the number. Easy to read or not? Ah, okay. So usually that's why if it's very large numbers or very small numbers, zero, don't lie, 0, 0.000, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I have to go and count how many zeros you write. And then habis, you write extra zero or less one zero, you wrong ma. Then you cannot say, teacher, I count wrong. Ah, too bad, you count wrong means wrong lah. Mm. So that's why you write in standard form. It's better for you and better for the examiner. Okay? 
All right. If you're writing answer in uh, this decimals, right, how many decimal places do we write? So lazy. To the three decimal places. Yes, although two decimal places is encouraged, I encourage you to write three because the more you write, the more accurate the number is. But four is a bit overkill, lah. So it's like three is just nice. Okay, any questions? I will wrap off this part, lah, because I already write that bit below. Okay. okay. If you have problems figuring out the unit, uh -huh. how? Ah? Sit there and try. <laughs> then you, you talk, ask your HRT, can you please ask the physics teacher, please, what is the unit? Then you pray for answer. Why do you have problems figuring out the unit? How? Ah? What's the unit for specific heat capacity? Very good. I asked <laughs> I asked for units. Don't give me formula. Mm. Yes, so correct. You, you if you can't figure out the unit, you refer to formula. Okay. Now there's of course um some units, right, which by right you do need to know already. Like if I ask you for a unit for force, you need to tell me that you better know what is the SI unit for force. Okay? You better know. But if you really like blank and you cannot remember. And you, oh my god, like die, like, oh my god, I really cannot remember, my life is ruined. Okay, then yes, you refer to the formula. So, so you see, right, once you know your formula, you can really figure out, ma, right, joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Did you all memorize that? Or you work it out from the formula? Ah, see? Ah, suddenly life is so much easier, right? Yeah. So you refer to the formula. Like like C equals Q M theta. How come what M over time delta? What's time delta? It's time. You know what's time? You got time in here. Joules per kilogram per degree Celsius, right? So let's say for example momentum there. Eh? What's the unit for momentum? Who knows? Momentum is <laughs> momentum is what nonsense? <laughs> how how you know it's kg meters per second? Because you memorize. Oh la, that that's not in that that's impulse la. That's not momentum la. <laughs> hmm. That's over velocity. Long. Momentum is mass times velocity, P equals mv. So yes, it is kilo kg meters per second. But this is Gwenly, you give me mv minus mu, that's the formula for impulse. <laughs> I ask for momentum. And so happen, yes, momentum has the, uh, I mean, like, impulse has the same unit as momentum. Impulse unit is same kilogram meters per second. What's another unit? In case come out in question or something, uh, don't know what's in mind lah. But it's Newton second, right? Because impulse is impulsive force times time, so Newton times second. Okay, yeah. So that's how you figure it out. So if you blank, like oh my god, the teacher say uh, I can't get you know once the, uh, you, you know, I can't get marks without the the unit ah uh, you know lah you get stuck ah uh, you figure out the unit this way. Any questions up to this point? Okay, uh, comparing, as you know, physics always got comparing questions um, in your paper too. So comparing questions always comes out either question, question 4, 5, 6. It's at least two or three of these questions, 4, 5, 6, I don't want this. Or um, essay question, it will come out in section, uh, section B or C, uh? 
my god really i'm getting confused between your year and uh, last year i think it's section b yeah i think it's section no 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 sorry it's section c question section c last year was section b let me say section c yeah so when it's comparing comparing questions means there will always be two diagrams okay so let's so i'm just going to put some random blobs here because um no need to draw things lah, ha. Two so random blocks, okay? Ah, so they always give you two diagrams, and then you compare, compare lah. Now please read properly because, like, some of you from four students, right? For your class test, you some of you read the diagram wrongly, right? Like instead of reading it as um block what M and N, you gave me what P and Q, is it? Uh, or did it the other way? You gave me the beaker number instead of the block number, and I couldn't give you the marks. So you have to read the question carefully. What is being compared? Um, so in co when you compare, remember that when you compare, always try to use these terms. You either use the term more than, less than, or equal. Okay? Usually. Usually. So for example, if I put two, these two blobs here, then I say, okay, you know, compare the mass, uh, compare the volume, uh, compare the color, whatever lah, huh? compare the specific capacity. Question will give you lah, huh? question will give you. Let me load one of the questions as an example. No, I'm not loading your, your paper tomorrow. <laughs> I will load this paper. Mm, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. So every time you read the question, right, you please make sure that you have all the marks, uh, not marks, marks, you don't have, you don't know the marks, it's still give you the marks. You have to make sure that you, you have all the points that are, uh, that are sufficient to get the marks. So if this is a three mark question, I cannot stress this enough because I cannot tell you how many times, no matter how many times I say this, there will be still students who miss out on something because you just read a straight away answer and you didn't double check. If it's three marks means how many points? You must write. Six hundred, yes, correct. <laughs> no, yes, you write three. So if you have to write three points, you make sure you have three things to compare. You compare the change in temperature, you compare the specific heat capacity, and you compare the heat release. If you accidentally mix up something, sometimes it happens and you lose a mark, okay? It's not the end of the world, all right? Okay? But it's just that um, if you don't even have a point to consider in the first place, you can't even get one mark. So you check one, two, three, one, two, three, ah, okay, you have all three, right? So then you compare our change in temperature of uh, P against Q, for example. Okay, then you compare specific heat capacity of P against Q. Then the heat release of P against Q. So at least you can say, so change in temperature in P for P is more than for Q. The specific heat capacity of Q is higher than P, right? Uh, the heat released uh, by both P and Q are equal, something like that. Lah. Okay, so, uh, so as long as you make those clear comparisons, right, then, uh, and you read the question carefully, um, look, this kind of comparison questions are, are what I call are free marks. Seriously, you don't even have physics knowledge. Huh? You can still answer correctly if you read the question properly. You didn't read the question and then you just and then you just hantam money, uh, then you hantam, you hope for the best, the kind of hantam marks you get. Lah. All right? But the free marks, you read the question carefully, uh, can get, you get this correct, you don't know your physics also, you can still get full marks if you answer correctly. So please make sure that you write. Now, remember, this is a compare question. So compare, you need to tell me why or not. You need to explain, uh, oh, the change in temperature is higher because, you know, the, the day was hotter that day. You need to tell me why. Uh. Did my meat chat freeze? Am I lagging? Am I frozen? Huh? My question. Need you must you tell me the reasons why there's a change? Uh? Why there's a difference? Uh? No need. 
correct? You just compare enough. Just tell me, is it more than, less than, or equal? Now, what if it's not a number-based question? And that can happen sometimes. Uh, do I have a question to show you for this? Yeah, I do. I don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that. Um, if it's not a if it's not a number based question, then you need to compare. Like there's there's one question that came out before, but not SPM though. They they showed two surfaces. Like this was, let's say a uh, Like let's say this is a wall, right? Uh, this is let's say wall wall A. And wall B, and actually they ask for the comparison. So sometimes when you it's not a number based um, comparison, then you need to describe. Oh, um, like wall A is smoother than wall B. Okay, then you need to write like that, or, or, or sometimes you don't know how to say. Oh, then wall A is smooth, while wall wall B is rough. Okay, then that's fine because it's because you can't you can't it is it, is I mean smoothness is actually measurable as well. But let's say you don't know how to write. Then you describe to me, oh, wall A is smooth, but wall B is not smooth. Ah, okay, never mind. As long as you give me the correct comparison, it will still be considered. Okay? So this one, do you need to put this in table form or not? Yes or no? This one, no table, okay? I'm, I'm mentioning this because I received... Some, some students have given this to me in table form before. No, this is not where the table is. No table. All right? State the relationship. Uh, our favorite. State the relationship. Uh, how to write relationship. So you don't want to highlight, so you highlight wrongly. State the relationship. What kind of relationship? Are they father, mother, <laughs> brother, sister, grandmother, grandchild? What kind of relationship? Huh? How to write relationship? Huh? Higher, higher. Yep, so when you write, right, you can use the when something increases. Okay, the other thing increases. Or decreases or you want to write the higher higher also can uh, let me change color a little bit so that i can so that you know that uh, this is answer okay i, I got no space or you can write the uh, this one is higher uh, then the other one higher or lower and so when to use directly uh, itulah question. Yes, when there's a graph. Correct. By the way, I don't want you to use the word higher. Can you please use the word greater? Uh, let me put this one after the other. Can squeeze or not? Ah, I can fit. Ah, so we put here. Okay, so when you... When it's a gra uh, what do you call blah blah okay we we, we, we cultural or a b uh, when it's a diagram based question you cannot say directly or inversely proportional yeah um, you can only use those terms when number one is a graph or number two is based on a formula okay so for example if the and this is very rare in SPM though. They usually don't give formula questions. They won't give you, oh, F equals MA. Okay, what's the relationship? They, they usually don't. Um, yeah, so normally it will be graph law. All right, yeah. If it's, if it's diagrams, even if you know, even if you're like, ah, I learned this before. I remember that I stayed up, you know, like seven months every day studying this concept. And now I'm very confident. I know that, you know, um, uh, the the acceleration of the object is directly proportional to the force of light. You know so or you don't write because the question didn't tell you that. Because the because how they always phrase a create question is what? Based on diagram. Based on the diagram, not based on what you know. Based on the diagram. The diagram never showed you was directly proportional. You cannot write directly proportional. Okay? 
based on the diagram, you can only see, oh, when this thing increased, the other one increased. Then you will write that. If they wrote based on uh, physics concepts, ah, then that one you can write directly proportional, inversely proportional. Because based on the concepts that you know, ma, but the question wrote based on diagram, you will write based on diagram. Clear or not? Can or not? Talking to myself now. Hello. Oh, this one you all know already. Oh. Is it? That's why you like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, when it comes to graphs, uh, I... graphs, 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 graphs. Okay, then when it's graphs, uh, so when it's graphs, right, if you have a relationship like this, what's the relationship? Now, when you write, is it okay to just write directly proportional? Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yes, correct. You have to write some, the y-axis is directly proportional to the x-axis. So you, if you just write directly proportional, you're not going to get marks either because it just shows how lazy you are. So you cannot ah. Uh, so you have to write in full. Something is directly proportional to something. Okay, why is something directly proportional to the, the other one? Now, the uh, inversely proportional graphs. Inversely proportional graphs. Is this an inversely proportional graph? Yes or no? This is a what? What graph? Thank you. Decreases linearly. Okay, um, I, we won't go through all the shapes unless you think uh, we need to, but the shapes are already in your Form 4 uh, textbook. You have, you, you know where it is, right? Form 4 textbook, you know where's the shapes, right? Okay, so you refer to that, all right? But I'm not going to go through that now, lah. Right, because uh, I think we've got other things we need to cover. But anyway, um, yeah. So yeah, the only time you ever write the relationships of directly proportional, inversely proportional, increase linearly, decrease linearly, all that is with the graphs. Um, okay, and these are very very specific, by the way. Yeah, this kind of graph shapes, um, like the the all these linear graphs are uh, all these linear graphs. Okay, all these linear graphs, right? Um. And, and all these specific shapes, uh, you cannot write the general one that, oh, when x increases, y increases, when x increases, y decreases. All these cannot because you already know how to describe the specific shape. So only the specific terms are allowed. The direct proportional, inversely proportional, increases linearly decreases linearly the only time you can write that when x increases y increases or the other one when x increases y decreases is when the shape cannot be described uh, using those very specific terms okay 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 i'm going to show this to you i think no need lah. graph is not so important lah. Okay, come, let's move on. All right, okay, so that's for graphs. So now let's look at... Um, uh, essays. Now, we all know how to write essays by now, I hope. All right, so you know that for physics, we have 
uh, two very specific formats, right? We have section B uh, essay and section C essays, right? And um, so both of these are actually compilations of uh, different questions, right? Uh, and they all total up in total to 20 marks. So you got your ABCDEs and all that, right? And always one part will be 10 marks. Okay, so let's do in general. So I'm not going to go into specific how to answer because you all know how to answer already, but I'm just going to remind you one more time to make sure that you get got this, you get this right. Because it, it's not just about what you know, it's about how you present it. That's the unfortunate thing about uh, exams. You know also, right, but you don't present it correctly, especially for very technical papers like physics, you're not going to get marks. So section B and section C, let's talk about specifically the 10 mark section. Bring now, then, oh, should I call you? Oh, darn it. I didn't drive today. So speaking specifically about the 10 mark sub question, right? So the, all the others are, are like the comparison questions, la, explanation question, la, huh? the format, what, uh, describe, uh, what explain this la, and all that. La, huh? So be very clear about the, 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 the way the question is phrased. La. So compare, you just like just now. You like just now there. Like just, okay, compare, you just say the more than, less than or equal. So this is when you, how you write the comparison uh, answer. If the question asks you to explain, then you need to give the reasons, all right, and um, um, and then depending, like, sometimes if you explain the process, then you need to describe the process one, two, three, four. Okay, in terms of the 10 mark sub question, so section B is the one where they will give you a choice, all right, and then you need to choose oh, which is the correct one, and section C is the one where you need to come up with your own answers, correct? So Don't, don't stress too much because it's not that difficult, but make sure you get it right. Chewa, feel fresher like you must get it right. Okay, so keep it simple. Um, for section B, because it's the choice one, right? So section B, when there's a choice, right, you, it's, there is no more to write. There's not, not like extra, oh, I teach you, I write extra things, can get marks, right? Not for section B. You write extra things that's not in the question, you're not going to get marks. Okay? So for section B, you just come up with how many columns you think we need? Huh? Three columns, okay. Well, let's make this smaller a bit. Well, don't put so small, la. put a bit bigger. La. Section C, la. Uh, how many columns do you think we need? La? Three also. Okay, la, let's go with three. Hmm. Why three? Because Miss Ho said three and she taught the class three. So that's why the class remembers three. You're going to do two also can. Yes, two also can. No problem. The reason I always suggest three is just to help students get organized. So what goes in the first column is the aspect. What goes in the second column is the choice. Third column, then it goes what? The column is the reason. This is for section B lah, ha? uh, in case in case not clear, okay, section B, section B, okay, then section B. What about for section C lah? Okay, section C thing as back but this time this one is not choice this one is your 
suggestion. And the third one is what? Reason. Same, same lah. Huh? Same, same, but different. Okay. What if you label the header wrongly? Or hoping wrong zero lah. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. The header is not part of the marking scheme. You don't write the correct thing. You don't even write a header. Actually, it's not so bad also. Okay. There's no marks even for the header. So you don't really write the wrong thing. So you never mind. You focus on your answer. Okay. What goes inside the aspect list? Like the marks are not given for aspect. Marks will be given for this these two. Marks will be given for these these two columns. Okay. So why come out with the aspect then? Because normally, normally the question would give you the aspects. You need to consider things like oh, consider the specific heat capacity. Uh, consider the size of the fuel chamber. You know, um, where is it? Let me show you the. Oh, not this question. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, ah. Hmm. Like, let's say, this is a, this is a sample table from uh, Section B question. This one came out in uh, Form 5, CT1 this year. So, let's say you get this, right? Okay, yeah, you don't know what's all this, but never mind. Okay, don't bother about the question for now. They will give you a table. Oh, you need to choose from what? Oh, uh, you need to choose uh, from PQ, PQRS. What are all the aspects? This one, no? These are the aspects. These aspects, these are aspects that, will, that you can copy down into this part. So this is from the question. So you write down now that you count and see ah, how many are there? Angle 1, maximum tension 2, material of cable 3. Oh, got 4. Ah, 1, 2, 3, 4. You write inside here, lah, the aspect 1, 2, 3, 4. Then your choice, ah, you choose lah, ah, what, what aspect you want, then you write inside here. So then you write what is the, which one you chose. Bigger, smaller, ke, or you want how much tension, you want steel or iron, ke, you want high or low rate of oxidation, you write your choice here. Then you must write your reason why you chose that one. Okay? And then you think, think, you count how many marks do you have from here? Uh? How many marks do you have if you write down all these four choices and four reasons? How many marks do you get? Uh? Eight. Eight, hey, but it's a 10 mark question, or how? Uh? Final choice. Yes, exactly. So then you write the final choice. You can put it in a table form. That's fine. Like, oh, I, I choose P. Uh, you choose P, Y, and you write your reason here. Look. That will give you your last two marks. Okay. So I'm going to insist that everyone uh, answer this part in a table. Because uh, I found that, look, I was, I, was, I, was, I realized also like, like last time I used to see, say, oh, no, the table is fine, you can write. But then the problem is, and I realized is that a lot of students miss out on marks because they don't write everything correctly. And um, some of them, honestly, right, until now, so don't get a table form, they actually do this. Uh, P is not suitable because the angle is too small, the maximum tension is not high enough. Steel is quite good, lah, but not, but, um, and the low is quite good, but overall not good. Then they talk about QR. Q, on the other hand, it's like, you, you don't give me grandmother, grandfather story about all this. I don't want to hear. I, I got, you know, I got, I got better things to do with my life. So, you don't need to tell me PQRS, what in this class is. No, no, no. You go straight to tell me what aspect you want. Based on the aspect, oh, ah, I choose which one. I choose, I choose R because of this, this, this. Okay? So, you get straight to the point. Don't, don't waste my time and your time. Okay? So, section C is open-ended a little bit. You need to make, uh, you need to choose, um, not choose, sorry. Uh, they'll, they'll, either the question will give you the aspects that you need to consider, or sometimes you don't even have, it's open, you figure out for yourself. Okay, but depends. Um, I've seen SBM questions, some they, they give, some they don't give. Like, let's say, for example, um, you all recognize, some of you will recognize this question. 
city one so I can fall. Okay, I've lost the tap. <laughs> press the <laughs> press the stool jam bot tap. Mm. Like this. Determine uh, upper knee. Uh, then you see eh, one, two, three, four, five. These are the aspects, right? So these are the aspects. Why I circle the number? That's what the num number is not good there. This one is the aspects. Ah. So these aspects you can write inside here. Lor. One, two, three, four, five. You write lah. Ah, okay, size of parachute height. That way, that way, then it helps you stay on track. Oh, I need to figure out the size of the parachute. Then you give me the suggestion for the suitable size, lor. Okay, then you give me a reason. Then you look, oh, uh, second one is height. So you wrote a height of parachute. Height, how should it be? Oh, it should be longer. Lor. You write. Okay. So the reason I ask you to write the aspects here is to help you stay on track and to make sure that you've answered everything that the question has asked. Because if you want to write extra, extra bits, but you didn't even fulfill the minimum written here. Because you know like how, I know some of you have come across the questions, right? We've done this in class before, and I think we've also done this in um, some of your your, your, your year exams, right? Uh, where is it? No, this one is class test. Where is the question paper? Ah, like this one. When people see this and they like, oh my god, why, why, why? Uh, here. Uh, then you get things like this. Material use has other aspects. Oh my god, what other aspects to consider? I don't know, Lacha. Uh, too bad, you got to figure it out. So when you have things like this, that means your aspects that you have to write, you must fulfill the bare minimum. You must write down the material, you must write the size. You don't even write this. Let's say you write five other aspects. No matter how correct they are, the fact that you didn't write material and size, you cannot get full marks. Why? Because marks are allocated for this. Because the question says you should include this. That means you must include minimum the material and size. Then only you talk about the other aspects. Okay? So that's why I suggest writing the, the, the aspect list. You don't write also, never mind. But make sure you have. Any questions up to this point? No, huh? Okay, uh, when it comes to um, this one, let's talk about writing down your choice and the suggestion. Okay, so when you're writing your choice and your suggestions, right? If the, especially when it comes to, to, to this kind of, of tables where there's a whole bunch of numbers, um maybe it's not such a good uh it's not such a good what do you call um example <sighs> i've done this with my form four class but i'll repeat this again because i know you all have like memory of goldfish like this whole so you need to be reminded when you have suggest when you have the table like this with a whole bunch of numbers right Okay, like the mass, loss, seat height and all that, you've got a lot of numbers, right? How uh, do you write the numbers? Uh? How uh, what do you write then? Put different colour lah, then might sir, a bit off, because Jambot very boring right? Ah, number based aspects, huh? I've mentioned this many times in class. General what? General what? How to write in general? What do you mean? Can you elaborate a little bit? Like, give me an example. Like, let's say we talk about uh, this one. Okay, like, I put a bit bigger. Like, I cannot see, right? Uh, let's talk about the mess. Okay. So, how to choose a mess? 
of the monobike for the road racing, the racing style, racing style. Ah, how ah? Greater mass. Racing motorcycle actually you don't want greater mass. But that's the idea. You write you write either you want like a greater number or a lower number. Like, okay. So try not to write higher, uh. try to write greater, greater or lower. Okay, larger or smaller, but greater or lower is preferred in science. We we don't really use numbers. We don't use terms like larger, smaller, bigger in science. We like to say greater or low or lesser, like not even lower. Lower is not even correct. Greater or lesser. That these are the preferred terms in science. Okay, um, so you don't write numbers unless only that number can be used. An example of this, where only not where only that specific number can be used, would be. For example, fuels values, electricity. If I say the question asks you what fuels is suitable to be used in this uh, for this particular circuit, then you gotta count the current. No? Then you must choose the correct fuels because if you choose a fuse that's lower, if you just put lower, then like how low is low? Or higher, like huh? Then then we get the largest fuse possible. Is that gonna work? No. Because there's a specific fuse you must use. I like for example you calculate, oh, current is 1.67 ampere. So the fuse you gotta choose three ampere fuse. You can't choose a five ampere fuse that's too high. You can't choose a 0 0.3 ampere fuse that will then the, before you can even run the electrical circuit, go out already. Right? So you so that case, no choice, that's a specific number you can use. Okay, this electricity from four, you don't worry, you haven't learned yet. You worry next year. Another one, uh transformer ratios. Again, this is a from five. From five chapter, because you cannot tell me my oh, the ratio of the transformer must be higher, huh? Really, uh? That's kind of strange, right? Because the transformer ratio is very specific. If it's a step up, maybe it you need to step up exactly twenty times greater, right? Like uh, that's like twenty volts to two hundred uh twenty volts to two hundred volts. That's a one to twenty ratio. Very very specific. If you change the ratio, the transformer may not function properly, or a step down. 20 to 1 ratio, for example, the 200 to, to 1, 200 to 10 volts. Again, it's very specific because if you change the ratio, the transformer will not work the, the way it's supposed to. The, vo the output voltage will be incorrect. So that one is a very specific ratio number. Then it, because only the number can be used, then you write numbers. If you have to justify those specific numbers, how to justify? Calculation. Your reason, you can write down, the, you can show this with the calculation. That is accepted because that's how you got it, no? The only way you got the numbers is through calculation. That's your reason, no? Okay. Can you follow? So examples of number-based aspects, right? Would be like mass, but, um, um, boiling, melting points, all right? Uh, specific heat capacity. Uh, specific latent heat, right? Uh, density. Uh, what other is there? Okay, the one, uh, uh. Okay, can. Materials. I've mentioned this before. I'm going to mention this again. Um, if it's a section B question, right, where it's a choice base, where it's choice base, then can you write the specific material name? Like, let's say, like this kind of question, table one. Material of cable, steel or iron? Okay, you're going to make a choice. Can you specify whether, steel or, whether it's steel or iron? Can you specify the name of the material, yes or no? Is it the same as Pascal's principle? Don't understand the question. Just not a number based. Okay. Uh, 
Um, I'm not sure I understand. Um, like number based pascals, they they like what? You mean you mean like? Oh, you mean like the pascal ratio? Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yes, yes, exactly. Zongqing, correct. I think you may have done some questions where they ask also for the ratio. Yeah, then that one also you must write because if the ratio, um, if the ratio is very specific, if and only if it's very specific. But if the question is not specific, let me think of the questions I know. Usually, Pascal's know though, they normally don't be very specific. Uh, they will normally say, uh, design the hydraulic uh, system to support greater weight. Then that one, that one no numbers, law, because you just talked about a greater area. Yeah, so I think that one no. So Pascal's no. You, you, unless it's very, very specific. But even then, but usually they don't, they're not very specific about the number. They will just say, oh, which one can support greater weight? Then you talk about general. Lah. I think that one we need to, that one, there's no specific number. The difference between Pascal's and Transformers is that because Pascal's principle, right, um, the, the, the system is supposed to be designed to support any kind of, of, of weight of load. So if it's, if it's a lighter load, it can still support because then you apply less force. But for transformers though it's usually very very specific because because the input voltage normally is very it's very set it's already fixed and the output voltage requirement is also very fixed if you let's say for example your laptop is designed for 240 volts uh, you put less it won't work you connect your laptop to 110 volts it won't work you connect your laptop to a uh, 3000 volts hub is spoiled so that's why for electrical circuits the numbers are very very specific that's why for transformer circuits it's also extremely specific Okay. Sorry, coming back here. Gwen says, can I? Yes, can. If it's a mm -hmm. choice question where they give you a selection, then yes, you can you can specify the material. Yeah. Because that's your choice. If they give you a choice between steel and iron, you can't tell me ah the material should the material should be metal. It's like hello, steel and iron are both metal, how are you talking? Right? So then you spec you can specify because it's like someone came to you with a choice, hey, uh, okay, you all want to choose wood or you all want to choose um, plastic. You can't say, oh, I want a stronger one. Like, uh, I don't know which one you choose. La. I don't know which is the stronger one. So you have you make the choice. La. Then your reason is what? You specify the reason. Okay? But if it's section C, la, it's open-ended, the open-ended one. I feel better right with open ended question. Can you specify the exact material? No. So, what do we write? going to write this way because it's otherwise it's so ugly yeah i know it's not google power uh, like, like not like powerpoint so i'm just gonna do the best material of greater strength why are you all choose strength strength is not the only consideration right just tell me la you you, you write the characteristic yeah oh my god <laughs> Depends on the question. La. I don't know whether the, you want greater strength or low density. What if strength is not even, uh, even a consideration? And what if strength was already already uh, uh, something else there and then you had to write, then you, you know, what, right? So, you you know, it, so write the characteristic. Then only you think, oh, okay, well, I can't say the other, you consider strength, consider density, consider the... The, the specific heat capacity, you can consider the rate of oxidation, uh, then you think, uh, but just consider, just remember first, okay, you write characteristic. 
all whatever you're telling me is the, the second step of your logical thinking. Talk about the first step first, okay? Write the characteristic, all right? Do not specify. Yes, my spelling is fantastic. Give me an example of a material that's very, very specific. Like only that material can be used in that situation. I've mentioned this many times in class. Oh, from five. From four, not yet. From five. Give me a, uh, well, give me an example of a situation where only that material can be used. No. Mercury, no. I've forgotten the name. Ah, yeah. Transformers core. Ah, yes, soft iron. Of all the materials in the world, right? Although there's a few, but only the only one that they accept normally for transformers is soft iron. Okay, so soft iron for transformers. Uh, loosely, um, if you want to talk about wire, right? Loosely accepted. Uh, loosely here meaning that it is still accepted. Um, if you want to talk about copper wires as conducting wires can be accepted as well because it's one of the most common ones. Copper is not the best though. Gold is the best, but not everyone can afford, you know, like gold wires. We can only afford gold plated conductors. <laughs> um, iron can. Iron or soft iron can. It's just that soft, we say soft because it's 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 a relic from from olden physics terms. But yeah, you're right, iron is okay. Mercury thermometer, mercury, uh, they usually won't ask, uh, but it's mercury, see, mercury is also not the only material, you can also use alcohol, ma. right, it's just that different ranges, ma, so different applications, uh, different uh, different ways of using it, so, yeah, so, actually, whichever the case is, um, if, if in those, those those few that you gave me, it's also quite possible that those, those are the only materials that can be used, then you write down, ma, those materials, okay, but uh, I'm just going to write soft iron here because it's the only one where it's very extremely, very extremely fixed. The rest all is just that because sometimes no choice. Uh, we use copper because we want to use gold but cannot, so we use copper. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so try to write a characteristic instead. Like, if you could. You see, like copper, instead of writing copper, you write what? Low resistivity. Better, ma. Laminated is, laminated is not a material. Lamination is already uh you've already it's, it's more like um you you it's a it's a condition the soft iron has undergone the condition so it depends on the question the question asks for material you don't give me laminated you just give me soft iron you can write laminated they're not they're not gonna mark you wrong but you're wasting your extra ink okay because if it's not if, what if I don't ask you for transformer what if I just ask you for a core of an electromagnet. Like if I ask you for a circuit breaker, I want the core of the the circuit breaker. Then it's iron. You give you cannot put laminated. No point. You're wasting wasting resources creating a laminated core for a circuit breaker. Okay, can I follow. Let's talk about reasons. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, let's talk about reasons first. Okay, so when we talk about reasons, uh, just a few things to remember, please. What color did I use? Okay, okay, so please, please, please take note of the reasons when you write, yeah? The time really at 316. Okay, so when it comes to reasons, please remember you do not repeat the reasons verbatim. That means I, uh, teacher, I don't know, I copy-paste. You copy-paste, uh, you copy-paste means you don't get marks for copy-pasting. Uh? Do not repeat the reasons verbatim, okay? Do not use the exact terms that are in the question. 
some of you lost marks in mid year because of this. Like when the because the question says, uh, choose choose a uh, more sensitive emitter, then you wrote all oh, to make it more sensitive. You also cannot get. So don't use the exact terms that are in the question. What you need to do is you need to. Um, what you can do is you can, uh, you must come up with different reasons. So every every single one must have different reasons. But let's say if you can't remember, right? What you can do is you can rewrite um, using different terms and words. Don't say or oh, more sensitive. Uh, so you can say that it uh, is easier for the emitter to detect a smaller change in the current. Okay, you 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 if you, if you can write something with the same meaning but you use different terms. If you use the exact same term, you can't get marks. So you have to be very careful about that. Okay? Can, any, any questions up to this point? No, uh, okay. Then, um, I've mentioned this before, I'll mention this again as a reminder. When you are writing out things like your comparison, that you compare, la, see you're comparing. Um, also, if you are writing out your reason, uh, wait, wait, modification, ke, modi, how do I start? modification, reason, okay. Okay. Uh, Whichever the case is, right, when it comes to um, physics, uh, how we answer the question, right, I'd like you to keep in mind, right, that whenever we, we especially for SPM, now this is more an SPM thing, uh, more than a physics, no, that's not true, actually it's a physics thing in general, because even research I read also, right, is, is all based on this, they like to compare. Comparative terms. Oh wait, I'm just reading pages now. What about two reasons of the same meaning but different terms? Can that one can, as long as it's not exactly the same, okay? Because I know sometimes you blank and you're like, oh, teacher, but the question says this, and I cannot think of any other reason. Fine, you rewrite the reason in different terms, but you cannot use lock, stock, barrel, same, same words. Ah, but you rewrite. Uh, Comparing, uh, compare, modify, or whatever, right? Okay, so remember that in physics, in general, we always like we always like to have comparative terms. So comparative terms, uh, that means uh, you don't just say high, low, big, small, right? So you, you always need to use, that means uh, comparative means what? Try to use the word more or less. Okay, or something like greater, greater or lesser. I think no need this one lah. Ha, ha. You get it lah. More or less, greater or lesser, greater or lesser like that. Ha. So for example, uh, greater mass, greater height. Um. It's uh, how's the term? Uh, greater smoothness. You know, so so you you try to 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 use these terms rather than just saying oh, for example, right? If we talk about comparison, uh, like let's say like uh, PQ, you don't say oh, P is small, Q is big. Wall is wall A is smooth, wall B is rough. Try not try not to do stuff like that. You you try to talk up. You try to always compare it lah. Like P has a. Uh, uh, has a lesser volume than Q, right? Uh, P has a lower specific heat capacity than Q. So you always try to write in comparative terms. Why? Because phys there's no absolute, there's, there's really like no absolute in physics when it comes to descriptors. You don't say, oh, this is big. There, there isn't because physics, right? There's, there's no such thing as big. There is bigger, okay? They're, they're so small, they're smaller. So remember, we learned, like I mentioned before, it's like how big is big, how small is small. Something could be big in this as in this field, but it's considered small in another field, right? So we don't have absolutes like that. We always have comparative. We will. That's why you find now uh, the questions are always two diagrams. You compare, always, because number one, we're trying to find the relationship. 
actually that's the only reason why I got number one. <laughs> that's the reason because we're trying to find a relationship. When something increases, how does the other change? Does it increase as well or does it decrease? So it's always comparative. So that's why even when you come up with the what the modification or the reason, right? Oh, why you chose a lower mass or lower mass because that it will have greater acceleration. If you say a oh, low mass so that it will have higher acceleration, that becomes an absolute. Okay, low mass. How small? How low is low? Are that you just drive a one gram motorbike, lah? You know what I mean? It's like it's too absolute. So so no absolutes. Okay. So we 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 always go with comparative terms. Okay. So use the terms more or less, or you can say greater or lesser. Um, I've mentioned this, I think, in my form four class. Avoid using these terms. I I thought you don't use some of these terms, right? So you try to avoid using terms like um, deeper. Try to avoid saying stronger, longer. What other others I gave you? Maybe bigger and smaller can also. But I think let's just blanket rule lah. Try to avoid. Mm, faster, slower. I try to avoid higher, yeah, higher. Any moment. Yep, avoid using all these terms. Higher, higher. You understand why? Or if there's other, there may be other terms also, but you, I think you get you, but but as long as it's along this, like along the lines of this, you all understand why you need to avoid these terms. I'm not saying it's wrong, but we try to avoid because using these terms correct they're vague, and um, they also are usually linked to a specific characteristic, um, which then causes uh, confusion on the side of the students. So it's like deep is about depth, not high, high, high is about height. Long can be for time, can be for length. Strong is specifically strength, right? Big, small is size. Okay, so fast, slow is about speed. So the thing is about physics, right? We 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 are very. We are, you must remember we are square. Okay, you are not square. Now you must become square. You don't say, oh, don't be square. You know, think out of the box. Ah, uh, too bad. You wanna you want to do well in physics. Yeah, you better be a square. Okay, so let's be square. So I'm drawing a square here to remind you. Please be square. So when we want, we are squares. Because we are very, we must be very, very clear about our definitions. Okay, don't say physics lah. Huh? Law also have to be very, have to be very clear about the definitions. It's like the law, when the law states that, oh, you know, um, uh, what the legal age? Define what you mean by legal age. Oh, it, uh, like let's say like twenty one years old, or, or sixteen years old, or eighteen years old. Okay, specifically when on the day they they turn they, their birth date. You know, very specific definitions of terms are very important. Because that way, it makes sure everyone is talking about the same thing. If I just say legal age, some people think it's twenty-one, some people think it's eighteen. Suddenly, we're going to be talking, and then we're going to be arguing, and actually, we're arguing wrongly because we didn't understand each other. Okay, so that's in general, lah. But we talk about physics, right? The terms have to be very, very clear and very specific because similarly, uh, uh, this term, if it's not defined properly, to you, it'll mean different from to me. So that's why physics, if they're not in science in general, they've come up with very, very specific terms that have very, very specific uh, meanings. So that's why to make it extremely clear, they have to break the language down so that it becomes very, uh, what call it? Be, it doesn't leave room for ambiguity. So it's extremely clear. So that's so how you write in physics is you have to write comparative terms and you must mention the physical quantity. For example, greater mass. So you don't say heavier. Ah, that's another one. Ah, don't say heavier, right? Ah. You don't say. Uh, you you don't say. Oh, uh, the 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 pressure is stronger. You don't say. Um, the car is faster. Okay, you cannot. So you don't say faster. Greater speed. Uh, lesser speed. Okay, even the word stronger is wrong because stronger is related to what strength. So you cannot say the 
just because oh Star Wars the Force is strong with this one. Sorry lah, that first the one that one is 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 uh geek them. Okay, uh, you all go watch your Star Wars. Okay, but when it comes to physics, then it's the Force is greater, the Force is lesser, not Force is stronger. Clear? Okay, so yeah, so that's why you we avoid these terms because these terms are vague, they're not specific enough, they leave too much room for ambiguity. All right, and I think I, I didn't I didn't write this down. Okay, but yeah, so so some so just just uh, try to avoid this. Just remember, okay, stick to either more or less or greater or lesser. Like there's uh you apply uh I mean like that there's there's what's the term? Uh, more actually more or less not so correct greater or lesser lah. But never mind. Yeah, greater speed, greater length. Yeah, you you write stuff. You must write the physical quantity. Also remember that when it comes to physical quantities, physical quantities, right? Um, the different physical quantities also have uh, very different uh, characteristics. Uh, so you must be very specific about the characteristics. So like, let's say, for example, if you talk about strength, and I know that this is your favorite fallback, <laughs> because if you don't know what characteristics to write, just write strength. Because why? Uh, yeah, of course, we want something that's got greater strength, right? Because it doesn't break easily. So strength is about uh, about the breakability. La. That means um, not equal. La. Strength would be... That means uh, it doesn't break easily. So, yeah, that's how we choose strength. Now, if we're talking about uh, something that doesn't bend easily, that's rigidity. Oh, the correct one is doesn't change it easily. So, like... Um, like... Uh, What's a good example? Paper is not rigid. Paper can change shape easily. Plasticine is not rigid, can change shape easily. Um, but like a pen, it's rigid no? because it doesn't change shape easily. Okay. Then you have what? Uh, this one is a form 5 one. No? Elastic, right? Elasticity is, is, is about it returning to its original shape and size. Elasticity is not about stretchability. It's about the ability to come back to its original shape and size. You let go, pshum, comes back. That's elastic. So then if you're like, oh, can it be stretched? That's stretchability. Lah. Okay. Um, I'm just sharing this term. These terms probably won't come out, right? But I just want you to be aware that different terms have very different uh, specific meanings. So just be aware of this and don't 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 relate them like, oh, um, something should should be uh, it needs to have greater strength. Huh? Why? Uh, so that it doesn't change shape. Are uh, they wrong really? Because it's not related. Rigidity and stiffness mean the same thing. No. Stiffness is is actually what like spring constant. Oh no, in, in, in English they mean the same thing. In physics they don't. So stiffness is the spring constant. So stiffness is is that means like the the the, the force needed to extend it to 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 to, uh, to make the spring extend the ratio of the force yeah yeah so that's another thing we have to be very careful about because especially those of you are very good in english right and you've learned to 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 you know be able to use different terms to mean the same thing uh physics no the physics is extremely specific so using terms like accurate and precise a lot of people in, in, in everyday language use them to mean the same thing. In physics, they are two very different things. Accuracy and precision are two very different things. Okay? So so you, you do have to be very careful about that. Lah. Yeah. Other terms I always see people get confused about. I always see on like they will use like inter like, like interchangeably, but yeah, in English can, but not in physics. Welcome, take care.